we come again to announce the season of that day. For this time in our lives as the beloved children of the kingdom, and God loves us in ways that only He can. Reaching into our lives where we are and with all that we are and preparing us for the greatest thing that's ever been or will ever be. The season of Advent, we are reminded as His children, is the season of coming in our lives. And so, as Christians, as confessing followers of Jesus, we acknowledge today that this is the truth about the season of Advent. Jesus came, this little gentle Savior, He came to Bethlehem. He came because He loves us so very much. He came to give His life for you and for me. He came to change us in time and for eternity. Jesus came. Today we also acknowledge as His children that He comes. This morning we gather here today not because we have nothing else to do with our lives, but because we are impelled and compelled by the very divinity that surrounds us and has claimed us as His own together as His children. And here, in this great and glorious God, He comes. Jesus comes through the word that he speaks, this word that is proclaimed and sung and prayed and preached. Jesus comes. We believe. And as his children, we gather here today in the full confidence that this kind and wondrous Jesus will come again. As he speaks his word to us, we are ever confident that we look to the horizon of life. And we know that just beyond the horizon, at just the right time, in just the right manner, as he has spoken his word, Jesus will come again. As children, we look not with fear, but we lift up, as the scripture says, we lift up our heads and we look to the horizon with joy because Jesus is going to come. And when he does, it will be a time of fulfillment and completion for us as his children. This is the season of Advent, and as his children, we step into it gently. And God prepares our hearts. There's this word from the prophet Micah that's been on my mind and my heart that speaks to all of us this morning. It's so, it is so apropos for this moment in your life and mine, for this beginning of Advent. It sounds like this, and listen to it with your heart, from Micah. But as for me, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. You know, they say, they say the good thing has come to those who wait. As we get older, as Age comes upon us little by little by little. Some of us, not all of us, but some of us learn there's, there's truth in that old saw that good things come to those who wait. It also has this, this wonderful spiritual base in it. God speaks that truth from His Word. Good things come to those who wait. Or if we, or if we hear it from a different angle, it would sound like this. It takes time to grow an oak tree put the little acorn in the ground and it doesn't, it doesn't grow up to a mighty tree overnight, not in a day or two or a week or a month or, or even a year. It takes time to grow an oak tree. Good things come to those who wait. For Micah today, we are encouraged and called as, as God's people to wait upon the Lord. But <laughs> this waiting upon the Lord, especially waiting upon the Lord, I want you to hear this morning, is not something that comes naturally or easily to us as human beings. In fact, what's in our nature, what's in your nature and mine, is for us to want to set our own timetable and our own agenda. Oh, we're going to wait on the Lord to, to accomplish His? No, no, we want to do ours. Maybe not, maybe not, loved ones, when we're born or when we die, but just about everything in between. We want to choose not only how it unfolds, but when it unfolds and what unfolds and how it's going to end up. We want, we want to set our own timetable. We want that. So being called to want to, as his children, to wait. Oh no, I want you to hear it doesn't come naturally or easily to us. On top of that, listen to this. The more difficult the circumstance of your life and mine, the harder it is for us to wait. You know when it's rolling along? When it's nice and smooth? When the easy chair is the easy chair? When it's all working good and someone comes and says, now the Lord wants you to wait on him, just to wait. And boy, at that point you say, yeah, Lord, I can wait. I can sit here in the easy chair of my life. I can, no problem. I can, but let the hard edges come. And God knows they come. 
Let life get difficult, rough, somewhere, someplace, in some way for you and for me. And then the call, this, this righteous call for us as the people of the kingdom to simply wait upon the Lord. Oh, it's way harder. It's floating along for you and for me. God says to you and me as his children, well, I, I have something for you, child, but I want you to just be patient and you wait. And we'll smile and we'll look up at the heavens and say, oh, okay, Lord, I can wait. But when life starts to impinge upon us and push against us and rub against us and gets hard, and God says to us, as we do, I want you to wait. Oh, man. Way harder. But then, loved ones, listen to this. We're not told that the waiting will be easy. You know, some of what we do as human beings is we create a world that has no basis in reality. And some of that grows up in this place. We want to assume as human beings, isn't this part of our brokenness? We want to assume that if God calls us to wait, that somehow, intrinsic in that, He's going to guarantee that the waiting is going to be an easy thing to do. God never, listen, God never promises us that when He calls us to wait, the waiting will be easy. He does, however, loved ones. He does promise us. He promises us that there are powerful reasons for us to be children who patiently and faithfully wait. This morning I want to share them with your life and mine. They are wondrous. Listen. Reason number one. Because God's plan, God's plan, God's plan is always the best one. In your life and mine, I want you to understand, just like we're doing planning, God is too. Here's the difference. Ours is all messed up by our sinfulness. God is absolutely perfect and perfectly loving. And in every one of our lives as his beloved children, God has a plan. And he's carrying it out. In your life and mine, he's called us and claimed us in Jesus. Did you know that was part of his plan for you and me? Did you know that he chose the circumstance and the, and the place and the word and the preacher and the, the parent, whoever it happened to be, to bring us into the kingdom? God's plan is always just right. If you look back at your life, just look back, just take a little peek in the rear view mirror. Haven't you noticed this? When God lays it out, when he plans it, it's just what it should be. When you and I plan it, well, sometimes not so much. When God plans it, listen, when God plans it, his plan is just right. And so when the Lord calls to you and to me as his children and says, Child, I want you to wait upon me in faith, patiently, as I claim you as my own through my son. I want you to wait. Understand that waiting is based on this truth. God's plan in your life and mine is just right. Reason number two, listen to this. This is why as children of the kingdom we wait. Because God's timetable is the best one. At every place, at every turn, as he unfolds his plan in your life and mine, God is timing it just the way it should be. One of my favorite scriptures, and it shouts to us at Christmas time, is when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son. Not, not too early. Not too late. At just the right time. Just the right time he reached into your heart and claimed you as his own through Christ. Me too. And in every other place in your life and mine, the perfect timetable, the wondrous timetable of the Lord is being played out. It's just right. And the outcome, listen, the outcome that the Lord has for you and me, which is why he calls us to wait, is always going to be perfect too. What he has in store for us, what he has planned for us through Christ, it's going to be perfect. The horizon is there. God has laid it out. He's chosen it for us through Jesus. And the, the time is coming, his time. He, he calls us as his children just to wait. In every single area of your life and mine, as his beloved ones, that plays itself out over and over and over again. God's plan is the best one. His timetable is the right one. His outcome is the perfect one. Over Wait. I'll show you. At the beginning of January of 1976, I was in college and was out with some of my friends at a gathering, a party, gathering, young people, gathering. 
and we were having fun, and there was a whole bunch of people there, people we knew and people we didn't know, and I, I happened to look across the room at a certain point in the evening, and there was this young blonde lady across the room, and she was quite attractive. <laughs> And I was kind of watching her and trying to get up the courage to go over and introduce myself to her. And I couldn't do it. And then a friend of mine came over and he happened to mention that he knew this young blonde lady. And I said, gosh, would you introduce me to her? He said, well, sure I will. Come on over. My hands were sweating and I walked across the room and he introduced me. And I remember shaking her hand and I was trying to be glib and, you know, suave and debonair, all those things. And I apparently did really bad. At the end of the conversation, I said, I said can I call you for a date? And she said, no. <laughs> About a week later, I looked down the hallway of the dorm room, the dorm I was living in in college. I looked down the hallway, and there was this brunette leaning over the drinking pump, taking a drink of water. Her name is Renee. I had children with her. Listen. God's plans for you and me are always the best ones. God's timetable is always the right one. And God's outcomes for us as his children are always, always, always going to be perfect. And this too, loved ones, listen to this. As we wait upon the Lord, it is, it is this powerful witness out of our lives as his children to those around us. Waiting on the Lord speaks this truth that we believe that he's God and we're not, and that's okay. Waiting on the Lord says we believe and trust that he can be the ruler and reigner in our lives, the one who is in control, and that's okay. We believe that the choices that he's making in our lives are the right ones, the righteous ones. And we are believing and trusting that that's okay. As we wait upon the Lord, we're saying, we're speaking, we're shouting that he's God and we're not. And that's okay. Even more loved ones, listen to this. It speaks to those around us, this waiting on the Lord. It speaks to them that we believe God is trustworthy. That's the message it sends. Just think of this. We want the people around us to know that this believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, this following the Lord is really a mark in our lives. It's who we are. And so as we faithfully, patiently, wondrously, gracefully wait upon the Lord to carry out His purposes and His timetable and His, His will in our lives as His children, the people around us watch and they listen. And the message we send is we believe God is trustworthy. We believe that he'll keep his word, that he'll be faithful to his promises. We believe. And if you haven't noticed, waiting on the Lord is great exercise for our faith. <laughs> you know, I find this to be ever more true in my life as a Christian. I want to be strong in the Lord. I want to have a great big faith. I just want to get it easy. The Lord has a different plan. Part of what he does in our lives as his beloved children is he calls us as his children to wait upon him. And that, that action, that faith-filled action of waiting on the Lord is one of the ways that he grows our faith, makes it stronger and deeper and wider. The next time in your life, loved one, that you are bucking up against, banging up against, struggling with what the Lord has chosen and when he's chosen and how he's chosen for you, I want this word to ring in your heart. As for me, I will wait for the God of my salvation. <coughs> With His grace and by His power, I will wait patiently. I will wait faithfully. I will wait when it's easy and I will wait when it's hard. I will wait for the Lord. I'm His child. In our case, in our case, good things do come to those who wait. Listen to that. In our case, good things do come to those who wait. For Jesus, we know that is absolutely true. Today in your life and mine, God is growing old trees. So with his help, we wait. And this morning in his house, this is the teaching of the Lord. If you would rise.